So, I've been playing the uh, Modern Warfare 2 beta for the last couple days. It's been in early access. It opened up to full open beta status today. Uh, overall, I'm having a really good time. Uh, there, there are things I dislike, things I like. Obviously, this is a beta, so there's going to be a lot of kinks to work out before the full release. Although, that release is only a month away, so there's going to be a lot of patching to do to bring this up to snuff. Um... I will say that it's hard for me to know fully whether the visibility issues have improved or whether it's just easier for me to see on my PC than it was on my television with a PlayStation 5 last week. I don't think that uh, removing the enemy nameplates is a good idea still. Uh, I think maybe reducing the, the distance you see them at or maybe making them... I don't know, maybe making them even optional for people. I, I'm not sure, but right now uh, it, it is still kind of hard to see other, to see enemy players and it can be a little bit confusing at times uh, to know where you're getting shot from. And I'm not really talking about, you know, obviously there's there's going to be camping spots in any in any Call of Duty game. There's going to be camping spots. You have to figure out. And you know, I've seen people complaining about the the Mercado's map. There's this, there's this central lane right down the middle. And if you go down that lane you are risking people hiding in corners and in little uh, little alcoves, and you're risking snipers. <laughs> when I get on that map with a sniper loadout, I, I go to one side of that lane, and I just, you know, it's pretty easy, especially the first couple rounds of like a search and destroy or something, to take two or three people down like lickety split with a sniper rifle, because... It's a it's a it's a death trap that lane, and you don't want to go down it if you don't want to die immediately, or if you don't have some sort of strategy like a smoke grenade, flash grenade, something like that. Um, but it can be a little campy still. Uh, I I have had a couple times where I've wondered if people are hacking because they've spotted me and shot me to like down from such a crazy distance so quickly and accurately and i've watched the the death cam and it's like how 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 did they see me i i don't know was it just a lucky guess are they cheating i'm sure there's there's cheating going on uh, i know there is because at one point uh my brother was shot right through the wall i mean there was no doubt about it i, I watched the whole thing uh but there's always going to be cheating even with ricochet which you know i'm not sure how well that that works but hopefully hopefully it won't be too too omnipresent. Um, what I like about the game, uh, especially, so I would say as a personal tip, I, I would widen your field of view to 120 from 80. It makes the game feel better. Not only do you see see more, but you it feels like you move faster. It's an optical illusion, but it feels like you're moving faster. It feels a little bit less grounded and clunky, and I like that. Um, it still has that more grounded feel of Modern Warfare 2019. But it's it feels a little faster, a little closer to Cold War's speed, oh which I which I prefer. Uh, I like so far. I like the maps. They, there's nice variety. Farm 18 is you know a very close quarters map. Uh, there's not nearly as many sniper lines, but there are some. A lot of close quarters engagements, both inside and in various buildings and within the sort of winding streets. It's very claustrophobic. Uh, in a lot of ways, but but it can be very fun. Uh, the Mercados map is bigger, still has a lot of interiors and a lot of narrow streets. Uh, it's a basic three-lane map where, uh, you know, especially with like Search and Destroy or Domination, you have a lot of options to go different ways and to defend or assault different, different points. Uh, I'm gonna yell at my dog. Baby! No! Oh, damn dogs. Um... And then there's the, uh, the what is it called? The muse it's like the museum map. I can't think of the name of it right now. Uh, big open spaces. Uh, you've got sort of this this big central open fountain. But then you also have um, some buildings on, on one side that you can go through above or below. And then you have some like really an area of like grassy area on, on the other side that people forget even exists. But that makes a great flanking route. Uh, and I like the variety in these three maps quite a lot. There's also the large... Uh, ground war maps, which are just portions of the war zone map, and these are, uh, uh, you know, these are for big team battles, including bots. You've got like, you know, 
20 versus 20, 32 versus 32, but also bot reinforcements. And I had a lot of fun on these as a sniper, especially. Uh, it's a fun sniper versus sniper game. If you wait, if you want to make it that way, you can try to get up as close as you can to take out as many enemies on the other side as you want. But then it's also like, you know, who's got the best position? Some some people find really great uh, sniper holes, and um, and it's fun to take them down, hunt them, and take them down. I like that. I'm not. I'm much more of a small team player like I prefer and will probably play modes like search and destroy and prisoner rescue primarily uh, I actually really started liking prisoner rescue and we played I'd say of all the modes we played we played that one the most and then when they when they brought search and destroy into the playlist that that as well I like prisoner rescue because uh, they've done a good job creating a point system that incentivizes rescuing the prisoners rather than just killing the enemy team because if you kill the enemy team, you get 50 points, but if you rescue a prisoner, you get 100, and if you rescue two prisoners, you get 200. So theoretically, you can you can win a match even when you lose. Like you can rescue a prisoner and then get killed by the enemy team and still get more points than them, which really incentivizes playing the objective itself. Uh, sometimes I'm like, don't kill the last guy, we gotta get that prisoner over the line first, because you're gonna get more points if you do. Um, and that leads to some really interesting clashes uh, between teams with different strategies. And we've had some crazy fun matches in that mode, uh, which it, it also you can revive your teammates. So there's always this, it's like, okay, I, I can grab the prisoner and run for it and hope I make it. Or I could revive a couple guys, but that might give them time to revive a couple guys. There's a lot of thinking that goes on to, into those matches, which is fun. Um, the, the knockout match is similar with the revives. You can, you know, if once you get down, your teammates can revive you. But instead of rescuing prisoners, you just have to hold on to a, like, a cash drop thing. I don't know, a money ball, and whoever holds on to that the longest gets the most points. We don't play that nearly as much. I don't think it's nearly as fun as prisoner rescue, but it's fun that they're doing different kinds of modes. Uh, in the time I've played, there's also been domination and team deathmatch, and then the third person mode. Third person we played a little bit. But frankly, I just prefer first person. All my all my friends prefer first person. I think third person actually works really well. It looks good. You aim down sights into first person. So unless you're hip firing, you're, you're going to aim down sights for your shooting anyways. Um, and it you know it does change the game because you can peek around corners and whatnot a lot a lot more a lot more easily. Uh, but I just I have to say I prefer first person. So I'm glad this is an option. I think it'll be great for players who prefer third person. It's not a cover shooter, obviously. It just plays the same as first person Call of Duty for the most part. But it does give you an extra, you know, I think this is actually honestly built for Warzone for having a third person option in Warzone similar to PUBG, which has first and third person. Uh, what I dislike about the game, uh, well, I guess I'll keep going. I, so far, I like the weapons. I like the, the weapon systems. Uh, like, I like, I like that there's gunsmith still. Uh, there's there's a, a pretty good variety of, of weapons in the beta, of guns in the beta, uh, and, and kill streaks and um, tactical and lethal grenades and, and so on and so forth. Uh, we'll see. With the full re release, there'll be lots more, but so far, I don't have any complaints about that. I do have complaints about the menu system, however, both in terms of like upgrade paths for weapons and then also just like navigating the menus, figuring out who's in your party, uh, figuring out how to invite people. Just moving around these menus is very awkward and clunky, and, and there's weird bugs like, if you're the party leader <laughs> uh, and you select something, it, it boots your whole team out of the menus that they're working. So if they're working on their, gun, on their loadouts and you click play on a playlist, then they all get booted out. Or if you select something else, they'll get booted out. There's all these sort of weird things like that. Uh, in the lobby, when you're looking at the character screen, you usually see the party leader's character, not your own, which is very weird. I want to see my own character in the in the foreground, or at least see all of the characters, not just like the party leaders. And then sometimes that shifts to random other characters. It's very weird. But mostly I find the UI and the menu system just extremely clunky and hard to navigate and pointless and why did they change everything to these boxes instead of just showing us lists like you can just show the players in the lobby that's easy enough you don't have to have all these weird things to click on to get anywhere um it's just it's just a mess it's messy buggy the game itself i can't really criticize bugs and glitches it is a beta 
but it's crashed not just me on my PC, which is something I, I've come to expect, but also my my friends on their Xboxes and uh, and and on our PlayStation we had some crashes. So there's lots of game crashes. There's lots of things like that going on. But on the bright side, the game actually runs really well. I can get great frame rates with pretty high settings on my PC. It looks great on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. So it's a it's a really good looking game. It it it's like a more colorful Modern Warfare 2019, I guess is what I would say. Uh, the only problem with with graphics again is visibility. It can be really hard to see enemy players, especially if you don't have a good scope or if you're I don't know, you don't have the best, youngest eyes of anyone in, in the world. Uh, and I think they've improved that. There's less like, clutter when you're shooting, less less smoke and, and whatnot. But, uh, but the lack of nameplates and other factors uh, does make it a little harder to see. So, those are some first impressions from the beta. Overall, very much enjoying it. Nice to have some new maps, some new guns, um, just some new modes. Just like, you know, new content in Call of Duty is always fun. Uh, it's a huge improvement over Vanguard, which I think I liked Vanguard less and less the more I played it. Like, the more I played that game, the, the more I just felt like this is not Call of Duty. The gunplay does not feel like Call of Duty. Uh, the maps are too frantic and hectic all the time. Like, at least here, you know, you're playing a big map with a bunch of, like, dozens of players. At least here you can have, you can have different styles of play. It's not just this chaos all the time, you know? Uh, so, yeah. Let me know what you think of it so far. Uh, I... I honestly don't even care about the minimap stuff, like, whatever. That that doesn't bother me. I still find that I'm able to use the minimap and use my senses and my intuition to generally know where there's going to be bad guys. Uh, I, you know, sometimes you get... Somebody's going to camp on you, but the thing about campers is there's always a counter to campers. Once you know where they are, you can usually counter them. Once you know that that middle lane on that map is really dangerous, you cannot go down it or throw a, a smoke grenade or something. There's always counters to this stuff. And uh, as far as like skill-based matchmaking, I haven't had any issues with that. I never really do. Like, people are always complaining about skill-based matchmaking, but by and large, I find that I generally do about the same. You know, that you'll have sweatier lobbies and you'll have easier lobbies. And I, I know it exists, but like, I feel like the point of that is to keep getting better and keep improving your game, keep improving as a player so that as you get put with harder and harder opponents, you get better and better. And again, that's how you counter them. You gotta get good. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. Let me know what you think of the beta so far, if you've been playing, uh, what you think, what you hope that will change for the full game. And uh, thanks for liking, subscribing, watching, and all that jazz. Peace.